Hello, everyone. The sun is shining, and I fancy a treat. Luckily, I'm spending the day with a very special ice cream van. This is Mr T, and he drives his ice cream van all over the place to serve lucky people delicious ice cream. But it's not an ice cream van without music. So, Gecko, when we're nearly there where we need to go, this is what we do to put the music on to let everybody know that we are nearly here. When Mr T arrives, he can move into the back of the van and serve beautiful ice cream straight away. Hi, Gecko. Hello, Mr T. So welcome to my van, Gecko. And this is all the lovely treats that we put on the ice creams. We've got lots of different sweets. Look at these lovely snakes. From the back of this wonderful van, Mr T can create some amazing things. Slushies, hot waffles, and of course, ice creams. So what I'm going to do now is show you how we make our magic ice cream. Get out a gallon of famous ice cream, take the top off, and then we pour it into the hopper. Ice cream is made from milk, cream, eggs and sugar. Mr T's special ice cream machine is like a super fast freezer and the liquids poured into the machine are frozen in just one minute. When things are frozen, they become harder and colder than they were before. Mr T is more than just an ordinary ice cream man. He's always thinking of new ice cream ideas. So as well as making ice cream cones, he makes ice cream trays for people to share with lots of sweeties, sauces and treats on top. There's nothing that puts a smile on people's faces like a lovely ice cream from Mr T. Everyone loves ice cream vans. Grown-ups, children, and even pirates love ice cream. Wow, this all looks delicious. Ice cream and sweeties are a treat. So remember, don't ask your mummy or daddy to have them every day. What's your favourite flavour ice cream, Mr T? And my favourite ice cream is the Bubblicious Bubblegum Tray with lots of pink and blue bottles and of course the lovely Hubba Bubba Bubblies. Mr T served lots of happy customers today. But is the one person who hasn't had an ice cream yet, Mr T? So here we are in Gecko. This one's just for you. A new creation, Gecko's Gooey Green Ice Cream. Ah, oh, thank you, Mr T. So what do you think about that then, Gecko? Did you enjoy them ice creams? It was absolutely delicious, thank you. Here's two for your friends, the Mechanicals. Bye, guys. I'm here at the Tarmac Quarry to meet an amazing freight train. Behind me is the locomotive. This is the part of the train that has the engine inside it and it's where the driver sits. And these are the wagons. Wow! There's loads of them. The locomotive is being connected to that long, long chain of wagons. These parts are called buffers. Buffers slow down the locomotive and the wagons at the last second and stop them crashing into each other. These big hooks are connected to each other. This is called coupling. These pipes connect the air brakes from the locomotive to the wagons. That's so the train can stop. 
Blue Mechanical? What are you doing in that wagon? Well, okay. I suppose you can't cause any damage in there. Please just stay out of trouble whilst I go and learn how you drive a freight train. This is Matt, and he's Operations Manager here. Let's go and have a sneak peek inside the driver's cab. So Matt, how do you drive a freight train? Right Gecko, thanks for asking. Very, very simply, we have a power throttle here, that makes us go faster. And if we want to stop, we have some braking systems. We have two. One, if we're only a locomotive by ourselves, and the other one if we've got wagons attached. If it goes really wrong, we hit the red button, and this stops us immediately. And for any naughty people we see on the track, we sound our horn to let them know we're coming. This freight train works really hard, taking special stone all over the country. This stone is used to build houses, roads and even schools. First, the stone has to be blasted from the ground. Big trucks like excavators and dump trucks work together to move this stone around. The stone is then crushed to make all of the pieces much smaller. But how do they get this stone from the quarry all the way over to the train's wagons. Well, inside these tunnels are amazing things called conveyor belts. They're a bit like magic moving carpets. They carry the stone all the way up and across to where the train's parked. And the conveyor belt finishes here, just above the wagons. The stone falls out of a chute into the empty wagons. Amazing! When each wagon is full, the driver drives the train forwards, ready for the next empty wagon to be loaded up. And that's it! The wagons are all full, so it's time for the train to start its journey. Oh no! I totally forgot! Blue Mechanical's still in one of the wagons. Sit tight, Blue. We'll catch up with you at the next tarmac depot. The train will now travel through this beautiful countryside for two hours before it arrives in the city, ready to be unloaded and turned into special building material. Freight trains are amazing because they can carry so much stuff. Over 30 houses could be built from all of the stone carried in this one train. More wagons mean less lorries on the road too, because this freight train carries the same amount as 70 lorries. Wow! And here's the train, right on time. This is the Tarmac Cross Green Depot in Leeds. The train drives along the tracks and into this shed called the Rail Offload Shed. This is Phil and he's the Rail Offloader. He can talk to the driver on this walkie-talkie and ask him to stop or go. Once the first set of wagons are in the shed, Phil can empty the stone out. Hop out, Blue Mechanical, before the stone disappears. Oof. Phil pulls these levers, and the doors on the bottom of the wagon open. Wow, that was close, Blue. All of the stone slides out of the bottom, a bit like water going down the plug hole in the bath. The stone falls down below onto another conveyor belt which carries the stone up and into the tarmac plant where it can be mixed with other ingredients and turned into concrete or asphalt. That's the stuff that's used to build houses, schools, hospitals and roads. The final step is for big trucks to load up and take the material 
centre building sites, ready for construction. A Tesla electric car. This car is very, very fast. We're going to learn lots of amazing things about electric cars today. But first, let's have a look inside. Wow! Look at those doors! That's one of the coolest things I've ever seen. I think it's worth doing a Gecko Instant Replay on that. Woohoo! These are called Falcon Wing Doors because they look like a bird's wings and they're designed to open in even really small spaces. Inside the car there's the usual things you'd find. Comfy seats, a steering wheel, pedals, but also this really big screen in the middle which lets you do important stuff like look at the map to see where you're going and play amazing music like Toddler Fun Learning. Brontosaurus and the Stegosaurus down by the swamp. Along comes a dinosaur making such a loud roar. Most cars that you see on the road are powered by petrol or diesel, which means they have noisy engines with dirty fumes that come out of the exhaust at the back. Electric cars are completely silent and run on electricity. There's no visits to the petrol station for these cars. All you need to do is plug them in and charge the battery inside. It's just like charging a phone. A battery is something that stores energy until it's needed. You'll find batteries in lots of things. I bet there's a lot of batteries in some of your toys. Once the car's plugged in, the screen shows you just how long is left to fully charge. This electric car is a Tesla Model X and it's got a really big battery inside which is what helps it go really really fast. This car can get to 0 to 60 miles per hour in just 2.9 seconds. This is what 2.9 seconds feels like. Go! Wow, that was fast! Do you know where a car's engine is usually kept? Yes, it's usually in the bonnet in the front of the car. Let's have a look what's in here. Hold on, look at that. It's empty. There's no engine. Tesla cars have electric motors instead, which are connected to the wheels. The bottom part of a car which is connected to the wheels is called a chassis. This is a chassis without the rest of the car on top. The motor sits here and the big battery sits here. One day we'll all be driving around in electric cars because they're better for the planet. Instead of using dirty fuel which creates pollution, very clever engineers have invented amazing new ways of creating electricity. One of the best ways is to use the power of the sun to charge our electric cars. All across the world there are fields of solar panels which point towards the sky. They convert sunlight into electricity. Solar panels are amazing. You can even put solar panels on your roof at home. Now all of this is really important, but sometimes you just want to see a car do a little dance. Are you wondering why I'm stood in the middle of this big field? Well, today I'm going up, up, up into the sky in a brilliant hot air balloon. Hot air balloons come in all sorts of different colours, shapes and sizes. And they work a little bit like this gecko balloon I've got here. This balloon is filled with a gas called helium, which is lighter than the air outside the balloon. That means if I was to let this go, 
the balloon would fly upwards into the sky. Can you believe that a whole hot air balloon is packed up in this small trailer behind me? This is Ed and Ben. Ed's a hot air balloon pilot. They're unpacking the balloon and getting it ready for today's flight. This part is called the basket and that's where the people go. Next, Ed and Ben connect the burners to the basket. The burners are like the engine. They use fire to heat up the air inside the balloon to make it float high up into the sky. Hello, Ed. Hi, Gecko. Do you want to come for a balloon flight? Oh, yes, please. I'm so excited, Ed. Now it's time to attach the big balloon. Ed and Ben work as a team. Woohoo! Wow! This bag holds the entire balloon inside it. I'll let you into a little secret. Balloon pilots don't call this part the balloon. They call it the envelope. Whoa! Look how big it is! This is a fan. And Ed uses it to quickly fill the envelope with air. That's called inflation. It's getting bigger! Wow! This is what it's like inside the inflated balloon! Amazing! Remember, the balloon will only fly into the sky if the air inside is lighter. My old gecko balloon used helium gas, but this balloon heats the air inside and hot air rises. So now it's time to turn the burners on. As the air inside gets hotter, the envelope starts to float upwards. OK, Gecko, we're all set. It's up, up and away. Here we go! To go up, Ed fires up the burners, which pushes more hot air into the envelope. Woo! We're going higher and higher and higher! Wow! We're flying over fields houses and villages. I feel like my old explorer friend, Phileas Frog. Ed, when did you realise you wanted to be a hot air balloon pilot? So Gecko, my parents took me to my first balloon festival when I was two years old and I was hooked. And then uh, about the age of four I decided that's what I wanted to do, I wanted to be a hot air balloon pilot. And here we are. It's so amazing to see the world from so high up. All of the people and cars look like little ants. It's the perfect place for a game of sky high, I spy with my little eye. I spy with my little eye, something beginning with... T town. I spy with my little eye, something beginning with... R River Where are we going to, Ed? In fact, how do you steer this thing? Good question, Gecko. Well, there's no steering wheel, so we can't steer it like a car or an aeroplane. And if you're in the garden, you let a balloon go, it just flies away. So that's what happens with us. But we can use winds at different heights. Winds at different levels, there are different layers, and they will slightly go different directions. So using my experience as a pilot, I can use those winds to kind of steer to where I want to go. Because we don't quite know where we're going to end up, our old friend Ben is following us in the truck. 
and he'll meet us in whatever field we land in. To make the balloon come down, ready for landing, Ed stops heating the air inside the envelope. As the air inside cools, the balloon starts to float down. If he wants to make the balloon come down more quickly, Ed can lift a flap in the top of the envelope, which makes the hot air escape out of the top. And here we go, we're going down. I'm going to crouch down inside the basket and turn Gecko Cam on. Get ready for landing everyone! Woohoo! What a thrill! And here's Ben, right on time to come and help us pack the balloon away. I'm here at the tarmac quarry to meet an amazing digger called an excavator. Excavators are the perfect vehicles for digging up loose rock. Instead of wheels, excavators run on caterpillar tracks, which are really good at gripping onto all sorts of surfaces so that the excavator doesn't slip. That means they can climb up really steep, rocky surfaces like this. Here on this quarry, they're mining for limestone rock. But to break the huge rock faces into smaller pieces, the team from Tarmac plant explosives into the rock. Using explosives is really, really dangerous, which is why the team here are specially trained. They drill holes all the way along the rock and fill them up with the explosives. Then it's time to detonate. Stand by. Three, two, one. Now the excavators can move in to dig up all of the loose rock. This is the boom, the dipper and the bucket. These three parts all work together to make the excavator amazing at digging. The arm can dig really deep and reach really far. Wow! I'm an excavator and digging is my job. I'm an excavator, it's time to load this rock. Round and round and up and down, an excavator digs. The rocks and rubble from the ground underneath the twigs. There's no trouble loading and we're filling up the lorry. These rocks will make a new road now, we've dug them from the quarry. I'm an excavator and digging is my job. I'm a This is Dave, the operator of this excavator. Once he's inside, he can use these two joysticks to control exactly what the arm does. He scoops up as much loose rock as possible, lifting it high into the air and drops it into this machine, which then crushes and sorts the rock into large, medium, and small sizes. This rock can then be used to build houses, roads and for farming. Excavators can move in amazing ways. The cab, arm and bucket can spin all the way around whilst the tracks stay still. This is called 360 degree movement. Woo! Dave 
Are you dizzy yet? Using the pedals in the cab, Dave can make the excavator move side to side like a crab. Left, right, left, right. And they can move forwards and backwards. Forwards and backwards. Excavators can also load rock into dumper trucks. Once the rock is ready to load, the dumper truck reverses into place and the bucket drops the load of rock into the hopper on the back. Good job, everyone. I'm here today at Alton Towers Resort. I'm going to have a ride on some amazing roller coasters and learn all about how they work. Roller coasters are designed for one thing, fun. No two are the same. They can do loops, twists, spins, and can go really, really fast. But how do these amazing roller coasters work? Let's take a closer look. Roller coasters run on tracks like trains, but there's lots of differences too. Trains only have one set of wheels that rest on top of the track. But these cars have three sets of wheels. One on the top, one on the side, and one underneath to grip the track. This means that the roller coaster can do things that trains can't, like going upside down while still staying on the track. But the main difference between trains and roller coasters is how they are powered. Power is what makes everything start, just like batteries in a toy helps them turn on. A roller coaster car doesn't have an engine for power, so to get the car moving fast along the track, it first needs to be pulled to the top of a very big hill. On this ride called Nemesis, a long chain pulls the car all the way to the top. The car is then released and gravity brings it down the track at whizzing speeds. Gravity is an invisible force that pulls all things down towards the earth. It's like sliding down a slide. Gravity pulls you downwards. Woohoo! This ride, Oblivion, works in the same way. The chains slowly pull the car up to the top, which makes the people on the ride very nervous. Wow, look how high that is. This ride is a straight drop which means there is only one way down. Scary. Some rides don't get pulled up a big hill, but instead are connected to a really long metal rope. When everyone's ready, it's time for launch. The powerful rope is reeled in and pulls really hard on the car. Ready, steady, go, go, go! The rope has launched the car along the track like a huge slingshot. This ride's called Rita and it can accelerate from 0 to 60 miles per hour in just 2.5 seconds. That's as fast as a racing car. When this ride needs to slow down, powerful magnets rise up and use magnetic force to slow down the car. A final set of brakes hold the train in place, bringing the ride to a stop. With all these twists, turns and loops, roller coasters have to be really safe. So all the people who work at Alton Towers work hard to make sure everyone on the ride is secure by loading them onto the ride carefully and checking their seat belts. Clever computers triple check the safety of all passengers too. But roller coasters don't just carry people. At this roller coaster restaurant, it's food and drinks that ride the roller coasters. When the food is ready, 
they're sent down the track straight to your table. Yum, yum. Well, I think that's quite enough excitement for one day. Thanks to the Alton Towers team for showing us around today. I'll see you next time. Bye! If you love this video, tap here so you're the first to know about my latest videos. Thanks for watching! Bye!